Thank you for joining my presentation using Twitter in the Writing Classroom, Rhetorical Composition, and Research Skills. My name is Kate Guthrie Caruso. I'm an instructor of English Composition and Literature at the college level. Um, I will be covering a lot of information during this presentation, and there is going to be a lot of information on the slides, so don't panic. You can access this at any time. Um, they are available on the web. Um, I'll have the full Prezi online at bit.ly forward slash comp tweet and the video cast with me talking you through everything at bit.ly forward slash comp tweet vid. All right, so where to begin? We first need to ask ourselves what is Twitter? Most of you guys have heard of the website, I hope, at this point. Um, if you haven't, um, I highly recommend you go to it. If you haven't um, actually been to the website, we do need to define it first. So Twitter is a social network um, that shares information across all disciplines in real time. Real time being the keyword, so it's relevant information in the moment. It is community driven. Um, and it means that only tweets that are relevant, interesting, or entertaining show up in top searches. Okay. So I'm going to show you a quick YouTube video that um, defines um, YouTube, uh, or excuse me, that defines Twitter and gives you kind of a background of what is going on with Twitter, um, and then we can move on. Using new tweets will be something we'll be talking about. That funny looking thing is a hashtag. able to reply, favorite, or retweet anybody. Alright, so that gives you a very quick overview of what the gist of Twitter is. So why do we want to use Twitter in the classroom? Um, there are really, I think, a lot of um, engaging things that Twitter can do for our students. Um, and the first is really increased class participation. When we think about um, our students, oftentimes students um, are not always as vocal as we'd like them to be. And so um, getting them to write out responses um, is an immediate way that we can see um, them participating in a new way. Um, and so I encourage them to do this, and, and I project this often up on, on a monitor as well, and so um, they see their responses immediately. Um, also, many of our students are already familiar with Twitter. Most of them already have Twitter accounts, and so this allows them a sense of connection with course material immediately. We also um, get to teach students to write concise, well-thought-out sentences. Um, Twitter has a 140-character limit when we compose a tweet, and so they have to think out their, their sentences before they actually type them out. Um, we also um, are connecting students to text through the links that are put in Twitter, and so they begin to um, engage in critical analysis of text, and we're, I'm going to talk a lot about that in, in a little bit later in this presentation. Um, and finally, um, it connects them to a broader writing community um, 
because it's not just the classroom community anymore. We're talking about um, millions of people that are in interacting on Twitter, and it shows support by giving them retweets or replying or engaging in tweets. It gives them instant feedback, and it, uh, it gives them a new audience awareness. Okay, so the hashtag, what is it? Okay, that was that funny thing that I showed you. We know what a hashtag is in our daily life, um, but on Twitter it does a little bit more. It's distingu distinguished by that hashtag sign, okay? And the hashtag is an agreed upon community of discussion on a specific topic, okay? The hashtag separates the meta from the meat, as um, Chris Messina, the creator of the hashtag claims. Okay, um, he, he actually went in and saw that everybody on, on Twitter was trying to communicate um, on Twitter and so he managed to um, link them up by, by putting in this hashtag. So it creates a link to a community discussing one particular topic and um, by doing that um, they are all interconnected. Okay, so as you saw, I'm not actually going to connect you here, but if you come back um, the video showed us that discover okay on Twitter and what you can do just as we saw in the space if you're interested in the topic of space you can do the hashtag space and it'll link you to that topic so if students are researching a certain topic they can do the hashtag and then that topic and pull up anything that is of interest in that um, area of, of study okay and, and remember this is all in real time so it's research that's being done in the moment Okay, so using Twitter for rhetorical analysis, this is really at the heart of what I think is, is very interesting about using Twitter now in the writing classroom. Okay, so what is rhetorical analysis? At its heart, rhetorical analysis is the close reading of a text that is critically examines the relationship between the text, the context, the audience, and the author. Okay, so through Twitter, students engage in this type of analysis really in three ways. Okay, so first, they're finding relevant and helpful tweets. Okay. Students learn to assess a good tweet really quickly okay, because the information in the tweet and then the articles that are linked. So first, if the information is interesting, um, they either click on the link or they don't. Okay. So they quickly assess the credibility or the ethos of the writer of the tweet before they even click on the link because they have to be interested. And then they have to actually read the article and take a look at, well, is this a credible author um, of the article? So they're engaging in critical analysis in two different ways um, pretty, pretty quickly. Okay. Then they're creating their own tweets that mimic that type of good analysis so that their tweets are then relevant and important as well. So they're creating their own writing ethos. Finally, the lessons and audience. Okay, By interacting with a larger community than just their classmates, they engage in their own self-publishing. They are trying to get their tweets to be retweeted and replied to and engaged with. Um, so they don't want their tweets to be irrelevant. So by creating that larger community, they then are, are becoming relevant as well. So the first step in using Twitter for rhetorical analysis is that research, so using trends and, dis and the hashtag to discover. Because Twitter is in real time, when you do a hashtag search, Twitter automatically populates the top tweets. You can individually click all, but this expands the database exponentially. Um, what this means is basically um, Twitter is um, automatically um, filtering out um, uh, what is is not interesting. Um, top tweets are essentially peer-reviewed by narrowing down the results. Um, I'm defining here peer-reviewed not in, in the academic sense, um, but basically anything um, that is being community peer-reviewed, so that interesting, relevant, um, and entertaining, anything that's being um, retweeted or favored um, or replied to is getting um, in those top searches, okay, and, it, and it's doing it a lot. So the spam or the not important and not funny or not relevant don't get viewed. Um, and so they're not ending up in those top searches. So this allows students to see that relevant information being said in real time on a topic. So finding good research um, in tweets. A good tweet with research is essentially composed of two things. Either a thesis statement or a hook connected to the article topic. And two, 
a link to an article that is relevant and well, well written. Twitter also offers a preview function so students can view the first paragraph of an article to further ass assess its validity and re relevance. Um, without these, students quickly see that they don't click on links, nor do these tweets end up in top searches. So I'm going to show you really quick. Oh, my Twitter link isn't working. Um, I'm going to show you really quick. my Twitter account. Okay, so for instance, um, this is um, New York Times. This is one of the, the ones that I follow. This is my Twitter account. It's at Ryder Carr. Um, and the New York Times often does um, either um, thesis statements or um, some kind of a hook to get you in. Okay, so um, what they're doing is just a very quick spot, like Critics Notebook. Okay, they're telling us what it is. Magnet Portraying Life, Documentary on Royal Academy Show. We would talk about as a class, does this hook us in? Does this grab us? Does it give us enough information to click on the link? Why or why not? We click on the summary to see if it's any more interesting. Does it let us know any more information? Okay, And have a quick discussion about if this is interesting or not. Then I might have them click on the link anyway and compose their own thesis statement of the actual text if it's something that I think they might be interested in. Okay, so. Go back into present. All right, so the second step in using Twitter for rhetorical analysis is having students compose tweets themselves and with or without links to research. The unique 140 character limit, as I've told you, allows Twitter users um, to limit the space to discuss relevant information, i.e. a thesis statement or a hook within their tweet. Some of my students hate this um, at first, but it makes their thesis statements far better. Um, they really get to be experts at writing concise thesis statements. And because Twitter is a public forum, the need for complete sentences that are informative and interesting adds relevance to each of their tweets. Okay. I have them actually use an outside forum, which is TweetChat, and it's a website connected with Twitter that allows a group to use a hashtag and participate in a conversation in real time. Conversation is projected in a chat room for the group to allow to follow easily. So when having students compose tweets, if you use TweetChat and a hashtag created for your class, you can use a project uh, or you can project the discussion on a monitor, as I said before, and students can either use computers or text to participate in the discussion. They simply need to use the hashtag that you are using. So I create, for instance, my English 121 class, hashtag ENG121, which I'll show you in just a second. And it allows for you to give them immediate feedback, the course to have a discussion, um, and then students can still use the reply or at functions to discuss further. Okay, so let me show you this really quickly, and I know I'm running out of time, but... So this is my tweet chat. Um, you'll see I don't have a ton up because this is real time. Um, they were doing this last week. Um, and so these are the only ones that um, uh, were tweeted and in, in, um, the most relevant and were being retweeted. Um, so you can see how quickly they become irrelevant. Um, but this is a really great lesson to students as well. So these were ones that were linking um, um, either research. Um, two of these are research and two of these um, are just simply their own thesis statements. Um, and well, two of these, um, as you can see, have links. Okay, so they were writing the thesis statement of the links that they were finding. Okay, and two of these were writing their own thesis statements themselves. We also had something happen two weeks ago where someone jumped in and said, what does this hashtag mean? I, I found it on, on accident. And it caused a big hubbub in my class because they really realized how, um, how public this is and, and people are starting to realize that they are, are um, in a, a public forum and, and are publishing in, in a very real way. So tweet chat can be a really great discussion um, uh, starter and I've got students replying to each other and discussing. Um, finally, you'll notice that I have no names up and this is important. Oh. 
I'll, I'll discuss that in just a second. Um, the other advantages of using Twitter for teaching composition is that they quickly learn that they must link to relevant research if they want their peers to continue to follow their posts. Um, and finally, um, it allows students to create their own research log. This is uh, super important because um, in their own Twitter accounts, um, they, they can go back and find any of their own tweets. Okay? It links to relevant topics on their subjects. Um, a completed close reading of step um, and analysis before they tweeted it at, tweeted their own tweet out, um, and it establishes context by having them write what the thesis of each article was. They then have a completed log that is easily accessible for them um, to refer back to. Okay. So what I was talking about um, when you saw um, my students, you didn't see any of their names. This is under FERPA law. Okay, so simply make sure that they use their school email and make sure they do not use their real name for their Twitter name or their Twitter at handle. So thank you very much. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me. Um, my email is kate.caruso at ccd.edu and my Twitter account is at writercar. Thank you very much and thanks for coming.